I never imagined that my life would end up like this. I never thought that I would be living in constant fear, looking over my shoulder every second of the day. But that's what happens when you cross paths with a serial killer. It all started one night when I was walking home from a late shift at work. The streets were quiet and empty, the only sound being my own footsteps echoing through the dark alleyways. I had always been a little nervous walking alone at night, but I never thought anything would actually happen to me. But then I saw him. He was standing under the flickering streetlight, his tall, lanking frame sending shivers down my spine. He was wearing a dark hooded jacket that covered most of his face, but I could see a sinister smile playing on his lips. I quickened my pace, hoping to just walk past him and get home safely. But as I got closer, I could see the glint of a knife in his hand. My heart raced as I realized that I was in danger. I tried to turn and run, but it was too late. He grabbed me from behind and covered my mouth with his hand. I could smell the stench of alcohol and sweat on his skin. Shh, don't scream, he whispered in my ear. It'll be over soon. I struggled and fought against him, but he was too strong. He dragged me into the nearby alley and pushed me against the wall. But I could feel the cold brick against my skin and sharp edge of the knife pressed against my neck. Please, don't hurt me, I begged, tears streaming down my face. He just laughed and tightened his grip on me. You should have thought about that before you crossed me, he sneered. I closed my eyes and prepared for the worst. But then I heard a loud noise and the grip on me loosened. I opened my eyes to see a group of people running towards us, drawn by my screams. The killer took advantage of the commotion and disappeared into the night. I was shaken and traumatized by the encounter, but I was alive. However, that was just the beginning. For the next few weeks, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was just being watched. Every time I turned around, I haven't expected to see the killer's face leering at me. I started having nightmares of panic attacks, and I couldn't even leave my house without a feeling that I was being followed. Then the news broke. The series of brutal murders have occurred in our city, all with the same modus operandi. The victims were all young women, attacked in the dark alleyways or deserted streets. The killer was still large, and the police were no closer to catching him. I couldn't believe it. The man who had attacked me was now a wanted serial killer. I, I was terrified, but I also felt a sense of guilt. Maybe if I had been more able to identify him, these women would have been still alive. As the days went by, the fear and guilt consumed me. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't focus on anything else but the serial killer. I became obsessed with finding him, with bringing him to justice. I started researching serial killers and their patterns, trying to understand his motives and how to catch him. But then, one night, I received a package at my doorstep. It was a letter, written in a disturbingly neat handwriting. It read, Dear Alex, I know you've been looking for me. I've been watching you, watching your every move. You're not like the others. You're a fighter. I like that. I want to play a game with you. But if you can't, well, let's just say you don't want to know the consequences. Let the hunt begin. My hands were shaking as I read the letter. I couldn't believe that the killer was toying with me, that he wanted me to find him. But I couldn't let him continue killing innocent women. I had to do something. With the help of a friend, I started looking for any clues that could lead us to the killer. I searched through the city, 
asking for people if they have seen anyone suspicious, but we came out empty-handed. It was like he had disappeared into the thin air. But then I received another letter. This time, it included a map with a location marked on it. It was an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. I knew it was a trap, but I couldn't let this opportunity slip away. I had to take the risk. I went to the warehouse alone, armed with a small pocket knife. I searched every corner, every room, but I could find nothing. But just as I was about to give up, I heard a creaking sound behind me. I turned around to see the killer standing in the doorway, his hood still covering his face. You found me, he said, his voice sending chills down my spine. I was about to run, but then I saw something that made me freeze in fear. On the walls were the warehouse. There were pictures of all the women he had killed, including me. I realized then he was been watching me for a long time, planning and waiting for the next moment to strike. He lunged at me with his knife, and I barely managed to dodge it. We fought, both of us desperate to survive. But in the end, he was stronger and more skilled. He overpowered me and pinned me to the ground, the knife pressed against my throat. You lose, he whispered, his breath hot in my face. But then I saw a glimmer of light from the corner of my eye. It was a police officer, drawn by the commotion. He shouted for the killer to drop the knife, and in that moment of destruction, I managed to grab my own knife and stab him in the arm. He let out a scream of pain and dropped the knife, and the police officer was able to arrest him. I was safe, but the nightmare was far from over. The trial was long and painful, having to relieve the trauma over and over again. But in the end, the killer was sentenced to life in prison. I could finally breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that he could never hurt anyone else.